I'm going to tell you today about how a uh, community of online gamers has totally changed the way I think about basic biomedical research. I'm a uh, professor in the School of Medicine here in the biochemistry and physics departments. And uh, I've been obsessed for a few years about a molecule called RNA. Some of you have probably heard of it. It's a chain-like molecule. Its chemical components um, are labeled A, C, G, and U. And these chain-like molecules are um, critical for understanding living systems and, in many cases, disease. For example, brain diseases like Parkinson's or spinal muscular atrophy can be traced to dysfunctions in how RNAs fold. And retroviruses like the H1N1 flu and HIV have uh, RNA genomes, and these genomes harbor our intricately folded RNA elements um, that are uh, important for RNA uh, replicate, sorry, virus replication and for viral infection. So what if we could um, defeat these RNAs by disrupting or refolding the RNAs? And, and what if we could fight fire with fire by creating new devices that are themselves made of RNAs? That's the dream of RNA design. Um, and at the heart of this dream is a basic biophysical puzzle, okay? and it's, it's kind of unsolved. Um, what I'm showing here is a shape of an RNA, like something that you might want in the, as a sub-piece of a complex device or switch. And your job in solving this puzzle is to fill in the blanks with A's, C's, G's, and U's, such that A's pair up with U's and C's pair up with G's. Okay? But the thing that makes it hard is you have to make sure that sequence folds up stably into this shape and no other shape. The difficulty of this uh, problem, I think, is best illustrated in a little quiz. So I'm going to uh, give you that quiz, and I hope you've had your coffee um, right before coming to the session. I'm going to show you here two sequences that potentially solve this puzzle. Okay? And we now know that one of them does fold up correctly when you synthesize it. The other one does not. Can you guess which is which? Okay, while you're thinking about this, I'll give you two pieces of, of information. The first one is that our best computational methods, if you put the sequences in them, both of the sequences will be predicted to fold up perfectly and uniquely. These computational approaches are no help at all. Secondly, there is a distinction between the two solutions. I think if you look at the solution on the left, it's got more of these yellow anucleotides at the loopy regions on the, on the, on the fingertips and in the middle, while the right-hand design has a more diverse sequences in those same regions. That could be good or that could be bad. I don't know. OK, so now let's, let's have a little vote. And just humor me and raise your hand. Um, who thinks the design on the left-hand side is the one that folds up correctly? Who thinks the design on the right-hand side folds up correctly? OK, the majority are going for the right-hand side, maybe because I use the word diverse. Um, that's not the correct answer. <laughs> um, it's interesting because some audiences get this right. Um, usually, com usually computer scientist audiences get it right. OK, so... Uh, the answer on the left is the correct one. And the way we know that is, well, like I said, no expert and no computer algorithm knows can discriminate between the two. We have to turn to nature to score these designs. My lab has synthesized both of these designs and carried out a procedure called high-throughput chemical mapping, which tells us which of the residues are, or which of these letters are reactive to chemicals or not reactive. And those are colored here as yellow or blue, respectively. And if things turn out well, the reactive residues are the ones that are unpaired or looped. Whereas the, uh, and those are colored yellow. And the other uh, residues that are not reactive are colored blue, and those should be inside paired up regions. On the left, the chemical mapping pattern lines up almost perfectly with the, with the design. And this is as good as it gets. This, this, this uh, design appears to fold up correctly. While the one on the right hand side, it's almost right. The long appendages have the right pattern, but the chemical mapping in the central loop is off. And this RNA is more likely to misfold into the, into the shape that's shown over there. And it's this kind of an error that would totally throw off an RNA therapy. Now, there's an extra twist to this story, which is the source of the designs. The design on the right, the incorrect one, came from the most sophisticated computational method that we have to date, the NUPAC algorithm developed at Caltech. The design on the left was named Taipan, and it was created by a video game player named Penguian, who had no prior expertise in RNA structure or design. This is a intriguing but, I guess, anecdotal example of how a game-playing human can beat a computer. And there is precedent for this kind of scientific discovery through gaming. In the early 2000s, NASA click workers and products like Galaxy Zoo enabled networks of volunteers to take part in the image analysis and data analysis from astronomy projects. In 2008, the folded video game enabled players to compete at protein folding 
in, in, on computers, and you may have seen press last year that a group of these players, in a matter of three weeks, were able to create a model that solved the structure of a retroviral protease, which had eluded scientists for the previous decade. Now, Eterna is the new project here, and it's unique um, in its exclusion of experimental bioscience. Okay? So players of Eterna, unlike players of Folded or these previous games, are not just solving puzzles in a computer. They are being actively challenged to help guide the generation of new experimental data and to analyze it. Okay? The tagline of Eterna is played by humans, scored by nature. And let me show you how that works. Every week, there is a, uh, a weekly challenge, and players have access to this mildly addictive gaming interface to create RNA sequences that fold into that target shape. They then are able to survey all designs that have been published by the other players, and they vote for which ones they like the best. And then we synthesize. Okay, I want to emphasize this. My lab at, at Stanford actually synthesizes these sequences that come from God knows who on the internet, and we carry out high throughput chemical mapping, and uh, we then return that structural data back to the players in the game. So you can see that the entire scientific method, from hypothesis to uh, experiments to results to the next hypothesis, is being crowdsourced in the Eterna game. Okay? And through this virtuous cycle, there has been tremendous learning on the part of the Eterna community. So let me show you how that, that's been going. We started the project early last year, and um, what, we, what I'm showing here, uh, sorry, on the y-axis are um, uh, uh, scores of designs um, that range from 0 to 100. Okay? And above the green line means you have a perfect design, as far as we can tell. Okay? In the gray dots are the designs from these previous computer algorithms, and you can see there's a broad range of accuracies, and none of them are quite perfect. The blue dots are the human players from the first cycle of Eterna, and I think you can see there's not very really much of a difference between the two. But perhaps you'd expect that, because there's no experimental feedback yet, right? Now, of course, humans, we hope, will learn from the experiments and evolve, and that's indeed what happened over the next few months. I'd like to point out two trends in these data. Okay, the first, the gray dots, again, are the computer algorithms, and you can see them getting progressively worse as the shapes, which are on the bottom, are getting progressively more and more complex. In stark contrast, the designs from human players are increasing almost monotonically over, the, uh, uh, over the, these six months, to the point that for the last two shapes, 90% of the human designs, even the first time they're challenged to make a shape, are better than the best computational designs we've been able to find. How is this happening? Well, it turns out, if you read the forums and you, and you look at the chat, um, the players themselves are proposing rules, like new, new patterns that they're seeing in the data that we'd never thought of before. Here's an example from one of our top players, Eli Fisker, and he noticed that, first of all, successful designs have CG pairs, or red-green pairs, that bracket each of these loopy circles, and those red-green pairs, they turn clockwise in a particular direction when drawn in the Eterna schematic. Okay, so there's no concept of the turning of CG pairs anywhere in the RNA folding literature. In fact, I didn't understand what he was talking about for a long time. And then, but it turns out that this is explanatory of, of good designs, and indeed, Eli Fisker is our top player. But we wanted to give this a rigorous test. We wanted to really test the predictive power of this method. And so, starting uh, at the end of last year, we created a game within the game, what we call the strategy market, where we asked all the players to give us what they thought were the rules for good designs. Okay? And then we uh, compared the predictions of those rules to, to, to previous data, and we gave them back points based on how well they explained this previous data. But then we wanted to carry this forward and test the predictive power. So we took, again, used machine learning approaches to find the optimal combination of these scores, and we create a new algorithm that then optimizes the score. It's a really simple Monte Carlo algorithm, which we call the Eternabot, and we tested that on new designs. Let me show you how that's worked. Okay, this is an example of one of these new shapes. Okay, it's never been seen before in Eterna. And this is kind of like the previous slide, where the humans, who are in gold here, are outperforming prior computational algorithms in the two gray colors. How did Eternabot do? Well, we tested it, and it bridged the gap between these two between the algorithms and the players. And indeed, here are the results on eight distinct shapes. In nearly all the cases, not quite all, but nearly all the cases, Eternabot does as well as the humans. In every single case, Eternabot outperforms these prior computational algorithms. So this is really exciting. Here's this automated algorithm. It's a distillation of scientific inquiry on an internet scale. 
And um, it is the best current algorithm for RNA secondary structure design. Now, in the process of collecting these rules, we started to realize that there's a bewildering range, a breathtaking range of ideas that are coming out of the Eterna um, uh, project. There are folks who are creating negative hypotheses. They're creating models that they, they're creating designs that they think will test what are the problems with our existing physical models. There are folks challenging each other to solve puzzles with not all four letters, but just two letters. There are folks who have created pinwheel and snowflake patterns that are impossible to solve with prior computational algorithms, but are solvable by humans. And there are even folks who are kind of doing art or personal expression. Here's a shape that a player proposed um, after the passing of Steve Jobs last year. And I would love to know how, whether each of these sequence designs folds up into the structures that um, they were designed to fold up into. But we have a problem. I haven't been able to synthesize these. And the issue is this. We have now over 50,000 players on the Eterna project. More than 4,000 have played enough to earn the privilege of submitting lab designs. And we're actually getting 1,000 of these lab designs a week. But my lab can only make about eight of them a week. So we're, we're potentially missing out on 1,000 really cool ideas um, every turn around. So this is um, kind of a problem. Um, we have lots of, lots of smart people, limited resources. It's kind of the classic problem of political science. But um, you know, we think we have a solution. We live in Silicon Valley. And so we assume that there must be a technological solution. And um, as you've heard probably in other talks in this conference, and we'll hear about more, there's a kind of super Moore's law, in a, a trend in the cost of biomolecule sequence, uh, synthesis and biomolecule synthesis. And it should now be possible to basically print thousands of designs on a microarray and then transcribe them to RNAs and probe their, their structure using these kinds of chemical mapping and sequencing methods. Um, and so, this will enable us to, do, to uh, uh, get structural data on 20,000 designs per round. And so in a year, and this appears to be working, and we're hoping to release this early next year, so you'll be able to sit on your laptop and type in an RNA sequence. And that will be instantiated somewhere, or in my lab actually, and then you'll get back biochemical data. So it's kind of analogous to the cloud computing approaches we've heard about before, but this is what I call cloud biochemistry. What are we going to do this massive, with this massive acceleration of the experiments? Well, we can certainly mine the data and see who won the lab challenges every week. Great. But there's something more interesting. I've already shown you that players are uh, 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 proposing and sharing and discussing very complex hypotheses about RNA folding. We're going to reward them for getting together and designing experiments that will rigorously test these hypotheses. And then we'll use this, this cloud biochemistry approach to implement those experiments as one of 20,000 experimental slots. We'll then reward players for creating small descriptions of what they did. And these will be like tiny papers that include um, hypotheses and, and then their predictions and the experimental data. It'll have links to all of that. And then we'll take the top ranked tiny papers every month and edit and revise them for submission to peer reviewed publications. Now, I want to explain a couple things here. This is not going to cure cancer directly, but um, first of all, these um, papers are going to be little tidbits of information. Okay? There's going to be, how do you design an RNA that forms a spiral shape or a five-way junction? But these papers will include experimental data for falsifying or validating ideas. It'll be real basic science. Secondly, imagine that an expert RNA researcher at MIT realizes in a couple of years, oh, I need to figure out how to make a spiral shape of an RNA to help deliver a silencing RNA into a tumor cell. Well, if she searches PubMed now, she's not going to find any articles about spiral RNAs. But in a couple of years, she'll type in RNA spirals or RNA whatever. She'll likely find a paper explaining how you make those shapes and how you don't make those shapes by an eternal player. There are probably about a dozen academic labs right now who are focusing on, on finding new rules of RNA folding and design. If we can get this publication pipeline going, then I think by the end of next year, Eterna will be creating experimentally validated knowledge at a rate that's one to two orders of magnitude greater than all conventional labs combined. A couple of years ago, we dreamed that Eterna could bring the scientific method and high-throughput experimentation to uh, citizen scientists through an online video game. Last year, tens of thousands of people have joined the Eterna community, and these, these folks um, significantly outperform any previous computational algorithms and they are successfully distilling their knowledge into new automated methods that everyone can use. Over the next few years, we're hoping to dramatically accelerate the experimental throughput of Eterna. 
And if we can harness the resulting explosion of knowledge through a publication pipeline, I think we're going to see a really new way of doing science. Um, just to end, I need to thank my colleagues on this project at Carnegie Mellon and at Stanford, and of course the dedicated members of the Eterna community uh, for the science. Thank you.